Hi, I'm Sanjay Mujumna. I'm a plastics and hand surgery consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. Uh, and today, in, for this medicine in a nutshell talk, we're going to discuss the kit required for open reduction internal fixation of um, a fracture of the hand. Now, before you do any operation, you should know your kit uh, because you don't know who your scrub nurse is going to be, whether they're going to be familiar with your kit or not. So, as a surgeon, the responsibility is yours. As a scrub nurse, you may also want to know the kit, obviously, uh, to acquaint yourself with it. Now, if we look at the stuff here, this is a fairly standard um, kit that we use in our hospital. Um, and what we're gonna do is to go through the different bits of it in a sequential fashion, all right? So I'm gonna move these things away. All right, so you've, you've um, got a hand and you've made your incision and you're going in to look at the fracture. So let's say, let's assume that this is what you're sort of looking at. And the fracture fragments may be, you know, not aligned. Um, and there's a bit of hematoma um, in between. And that's quite a common finding. The first instrument is a little pick we have. And the pick is usually to take away little bits of hematoma and, and soft tissue between the fragments. It's got a pointy tip, as you can see. And that's quite a useful thing, uh, the pick. Um, the next thing uh, that's quite useful are these things and they're called mini homans and you can see from the side that they're like little tire levers they just to elevate so they are the mini version of the homans and essentially if you got a fracture here and you want to go from either side to elevate the fragments so that you can align them up and they're very useful bits of kit for that purpose so the mini homans h-o-h-m-a-n-n uh, apostrophe s now once you've got your fracture where you want it you want uh, to then before you put the plate on is take the periosteum off because you want to usually put the plate onto the bare bone and it's a periosteal elevator so if you move that bone aside you can see that's got a sharp bit here and the way to do it is like that you raise the periosteum so that's a periosteal elevator lovely one with the wooden handle I quite like that one so you've got your bone now in the position you want you've now stripped your periosteum and you want to stabilize it so you're going to use some fracture fixation forceps now there are four types here and they're all slightly different so th this and this are essentially smaller and larger versions of the same thing. They're quite fine tipped, they're pointy tipped as you can see. And this one's about the same size as a larger one, but the tip's a little bit bigger, a little bit blunter. And now these work very well when you've got like an oblique fracture or a spiral fracture. And essentially you hold on to your fracture like that and you stabilize it and you've got a ratchet mechanism here to ensure it, it holds. In the old days people used to put a rubber band around an artery clip. This is much better, you get a much more precise sort of thing with that. Now if you've got a fracture like this which is transverse, unfortunately you can't use one of these because it just wouldn't do, it can't hold the fracture, it, the fracture will keep slipping. So one way of dealing with that is to put the plate on one side first and then use this as a cantilever, so a bit pointing out, and then you actually stabilize the plate onto the bone, so you act, because the plate is onto the second part of the bone, it stabilizes the whole thing. And you use this lovely device um, called a plate um, holding forceps, which has this bit for the bone and this grooved bit that you can see, I'll put it down better, and that fits onto the plate. So if we demonstrate on here, so we've got our plate on here, you re release all of that and you put that on to there and then you can then tighten it up. Okay, and now you've got the fracture stabilized, you can then put your screw through here, that'll stabilize your construct and then you take that off and then you put the rest of the screws. So that's the, the, um, the instruments that you need, need to stabilize uh, the bone and prepare the bone for the, um, the plate or screw fixation. Okay, now the next we will go on to the instruments that we involve in the plating or the screwing itself. Now this 
is a, a 1.5 uh, screw and plating system. Um, and the way we put that on is we use this kit here, which is just out of your thing here. So the first thing, we're going to use this thing called a plate holding forcep because these has got little grooves in it. So you can pick up the plates one at a time and it's got a little ratchet here. So it picks up the plate and ratchets on. And also because you've got a little round um, hole bits here, you can pick up the screws. So you can go pick up the screws like that. You've got your ratchet on and you lift it off. Okay, so that's a plate and screw holding forceps. Very useful bit of kit. Now, what have we got here on here? So we've got different plates. We have different length plates. This is a straight plate. The This is a shorter plate but it's a different shape it's a t-shaped plate this is another t-shaped plate as you can see where it's got four holes instead of three this is a y-shape y-shaped plate this is something called a blade plate and we have another video talking more about plates and so in in particular so we can give you a bit more information this has a bit more irregular shaped plate with um, holes in different areas so you use the particular plate you need for the fracture configuration okay now this, as we start over, saying it's a 1.5 kit, and the 1.5 refers to the screws, not the plates. It refers to the screw itself. Now, if we pick up this screw here, and if we look at a screw, the screw is threaded, obviously, and the 1.5 refers to the size of the screw from one side of the threading to the other thread. So this is 1.5 millimeters is the width of the screw at the threading. And that's important because when you put the screw in to the bone, you've got to make sure that the drill hole is smaller or narrower than that 1.5. Otherwise, the, uh, the screw will just go through. So here we then come to our drill bits and this is a 1.1 uh, one drill bit so you use that um, so that the screw can engage with the cortex now if you don't want the screw to engage like when you're putting lag screws and we have a d another video talking about lag screws you can use a 1.5 uh, drill bit on the near cortex so that the screw actually glides through there and doesn't engage um, with the cortex when you're actually going to use the drill bits and you obviously you have this connected to a standard drill you've got to use this thing here and this thing is called um, a drill guide and if you notice it's got 1.1 and on the other side it's got 1.5 so the 1.5 fits into the 1.5 hole and the 1.1 into the 1.1 uh, one hole the reason for the drill um, the guide is threefold one when you put it onto the bone so let's get our bone and pretend we're doing this when you put it on let's say we've got a drill in our hand you put it on it stabilizes it so it prevents it waggling around too much second it prevents soft tissue around from catching on to the spinning drill bit okay and thirdly it directs it now the stabilization is very important because if you use it without the drill guide you will have a little um, shimmy on the drill uh, bit tip and that could make your hole bigger than you want it to uh, and it's important that you use the drill guide at each time. So you've got your drill bits and your drill guide. Uh, you've got your plates, you've got your screws. Now, the screws come in different lengths. This is a six millimeter all the way up to 24 millimeter screw length. So if we take out this 18 millimeter screw, this, the 18 refers to the length, the 1.5 refers to the dimension, the width of the screw as we discussed. Always when you have take it out, you measure it is always a measure to make sure that it is the correct size screw because don't assume that just because this screw is in the slot mark 18 there's 18 millimeters long and your scrub nurse will always double check that so those are the different bits to the plating bit here now you've got your plate and you want to say oh well this plate is too long so let's get this plate here it's a bit too long you just want a five hole plate well, then you can use a plate cutter which is that and essentially you put the plate in here decides how long you want it and you cut it um, and here's a little example of a plate we've cut earlier much like blue peter so that's been cut we wanted a four hole plate from a long one and you can see that's been cut on the sides okay so that's a, a plate cutter so let's get rid of that now when you get the plate you want to contour it to the bone this is very straight 
So you want to then use a plate bender. Uh, it's two things, essentially two flat pliers and you go there and you bend it to whatever shape to contour it. So these are called plate benders. Very important to contour the bone. The other bits of kit we have here is a um, screwdriver handle and in your kit you may have noticed that there's some uh, the screwdriver uh, the rest of it is normally is a slip on put in and it clicks into place now of course it clicks into place when the scrub nurses do it properly the first time and when I'm doing it it may not be there you go it's clicked into place there now the other thing about the screwdriver it's got oh it's still not clicked into place let's try it again I'm very bad with my left hand ah there it goes clicked in now so the you have different handles um, for the screwdriver and different tips. This one is a cross tip to fit with your screw there. This is another screwdriver which has a, a different sort of four-sided tip. So the different tips are um, dependent on what kind of head you have for the screw. And you've got this thing here which is uh, a sleeve. And the way this works is you've got your screws here. Let's get our screw set. You go on to there, you go vertically, you pick it up and this allows your screw to be picked up nicely because you're not magnetized and it holds your screw nice and straight so when you're putting your screw in it doesn't waggle around the place okay when you reach where you want to go with that screw you just slip it off and it comes off excellent all right now the final bits is when you've made your drill hole and you want to determine what length of screw you want you use a depth gauge a depth gauge essentially is a little stick with a little hook at the end and imagine that's the bone you go through both cortices like that and it catches on the um, far cortex that little lip and then you slide this bit the thumb okay you hold up the thumb and you slide this bit down like that and you know what's the, the distance so this top bit goes on to the cortex and you can read off what's the length of the screw. It's a very ingenious little device and we'll talk more about that in the video on how to plate. So that in essence is all the different kits, uh, bits of kit that you need for uh, doing an open reduction internal fixation of a hand fracture. Thank you very much.